All right, so this morning we've got something that I've been wanting actually for a while because where I shoot here, especially, I had to do some changes to mostly this camera and the fact that I moved some of my lights around. I was getting on occasion a lens flare that would come across and kind of hit this light right in the lens and I didn't like that. So I ended up having to put this little set of flags on here to help block that possibility of lens flare, which I didn't really want. And this works great, it really does, but one of the issues is that on the right, it's actually out to a point where I really can't see my screen anymore. So I can't see the little flip out that comes with my camera. So I'm not even 100% sure if I'm framed properly or if I'm moving around. So one of the biggest things for me is I need to be able to see that so that I'm positioned properly. If that makes any sense at all. I hope it does. The other thing for me is that, again, because the default screen that comes on the Canon cameras, of course, flips out to the side, on occasion you will probably see me, probably more so than I want to, I end up looking over to the right. That's probably your left because I'm looking at the screen just to verify that everything's lined up properly. Being able to have a display or screen that is aligned properly with the lens, in my opinion, is a great benefit. So I ended up getting this. This is the Feel World 5.5 inch 4K on camera monitor. So I went with this for two reasons. Firstly, I wanted a five inch. I wanted a five inch display because I didn't want something too big for a couple reasons. Number one is that I don't have a ton of desk space, so I really didn't want something that was gonna take up a lot of room here on the desk. And secondly, when you're out and about, again, I didn't want something crazy large, especially since I shoot with fairly small gear, nothing really that big. So having a really large monitor on it just seemed like it would be silly. And I guess actually third is I have a Ronin SC coming, which I'm pretty excited for. And I wanted to be able to utilize some of the features of that gimbal and having a small display for some of those features, which I hope to be able to show you guys in a future video, would be super beneficial. So this hopefully will be a huge add-on for that as well. So let's take a look at the Feel World 5.5 inch F5 Pro coming up. Oh yeah, so this is something that I've wanted at least for the last couple of months. And going online, Amazon, all over the place, there was a lot of little displays in that five to seven inch range. Now, if you go back a couple of years, I had an old seven inch that I had used on occasion, but I found that the seven inch just for me felt a little too big, especially if I was shooting on something as small as the M50. It was bigger by a long shot than what that camera, or this camera that you're seeing right now, physically is. Now, I did a lot of YouTube searching, of course, like the rest of you probably do, which is which is possibly why you're here right now. And Feel World seemed to be a really big brand that a lot of reviewers were looking at. And they all said, bang for buck, it was a super good option. So, I went with it. So here's the box, Feel World 5.5 inch 4K on camera monitor, big bonus. P970 external power and install kit, which is fantastic touchscreen. Um, realize it says 4K. As far as I know, this is actually a 1080p display, which is great, but it does allow for a 4K input. And I believe because this monitor has like a video pass through, so that means you could go from your camera to this and then this out to another display, it'll pass through a 4K signal, I think. And here's some of the extra support wireless transmission, video lights, microphone, and converter. And I'll actually just bring you over here to the Feel World website. Here it is here, the F5 Pro. You'll see, yeah, 1920 by 1080 resolution, touchscreen, 4K HDMI in and out, that's good. I do like the fact that it's a type C to power it. So if you have a nice little battery brick and no Sony batteries, you can use this to power it, which is awesome, we'll actually test that. DC out, power for camera, so, Again, if you have a dummy battery for your camera, you could actually run that into the DC of the monitor and power your camera. 
all kinds of cool stuff. External install and power design, 245 grams light. That is what they're saying. So that was again, a huge, huge perk. As well as you'll see professional tools for framing, focusing and exposing. So we'll look at that stuff when we actually turn this on. But again, it looks like a lot of really good feature that you and I can use, especially out of a very budget friendly monitor. It's awesome. Now it's not necessarily the brightest screen in the world. You are seeing some high end displays putting out a thousand nits. This is putting out 500 nits. But for me, again, especially in this studio, I think this is gonna be way more than I need. And 500 still not bad. It's kind of the brightness that comes out of a lot of tablets and laptops. So I think I'm okay, 160 degree viewing angle. I'm never gonna be outside of that, so I think that's great as well. All your controls at your fingertips. The other nice thing here is it does have the 709 color standard. So what you and I see on the screen should be fairly accurate, which is great. And if you go above possibly my needs, you will see that you do have the ability to plug in, as they said, a wireless video transmitter, as well as video lights. So that also could be really cool. All right, let's take a look at what's in the box so this video doesn't get ridiculously long. Okay, pop that off. On camera monitor, see and capture every detail. Oh yes. So a few things here in the box just so we can see it. I'll actually pull the box down here and bring them out. First off, we do have a little set of like barn doors or like a little mat box that you and I can kind of use to put on there, a little sunshade, whatever you want to call it. This is gonna be very useful. And you can kind of tell right off the bat how big the display is gonna be. So that's much nicer, that's a much nicer size. So we'll put that right here. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. We do get a little tiny manual. Now this manual so far, not gonna be overly useful as this looks like it's in 100% Chinese. Hopefully, depending on where you get yours from, you get one that is in English, but I guess we'll find out if everything in here is in English. You get the monitor, so we'll come back to that in a second. And of course you get, looks like this is gonna be your little bracket and the bracket is gonna go along with the little sunshade. You get a little arm to mount and this right here, which is something that I don't really know. I'm not even sure. You also get a micro HDMI to full size HDMI. So super useful for those of us that have a camera that uses the smaller HDMI. Now, if you have a camera that supports full HDMI, you're gonna have to go get yourself a different cable, but you probably have a bajillion of those anyway. Let's move some of this stuff around and we'll just kind of open this. Oh, that's a nice size. Look at that, right? So I always say compared to my hand, there it is. That's it right there. On the bottom, you're gonna have your DC in, so this is gonna be your USB-C. You have a headphone jack, which is fantastic if you wanna be able to monitor. Your tripod mount and your DC out. Flipping this around, it's gonna have your HDMI in, your HDMI out, and your DC in. Again, you see these, right? DC in, DC out. So many different ports on this, which is awesome. You also have another tripod hole, as well as all your different menus, and another tripod hole. So you can put this really however you want it, which is awesome. And it's not also about wherever you want it, but you may have something like a little, almost like a magic arm. So you need to mount this in the side to go out to your device, or you're gonna mount it down low. So you want it to be able to have the arm come out of the top and across. So it has all kinds of mounting points. The only mounting point it doesn't have is on the side here where you actually have the HDMI ports. But every other side, good to go. Now on the back as well, you will see this is where you and I can put in our Sony 900 series. And it has this here to allow us to use this plate, it looks like. It says loosen, what does it say? Loosen the screws on this kit, push in the cross-shaped area to adjust the position of the kit. You also see right on the very back another tripod or quarter inch threading, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna do, I I actually bought, I actually bought this right here. So hopefully you guys can see this. This is a set of 900 series batteries, Sony batteries, see that right there? Right there. And I bought this on Amazon and it was not expensive at all. Looking at about 65 bucks Canadian, and here's the listing for it right here. Two big batteries, awesome little display. It actually can charge 
this from USB so you can plug this into your laptop and then your laptop will charge these batteries. They came out of the box about 50% charged. I had these both plugged into my laptop. Overnight they were charged up by the morning, good to go. So fantastic, $65, not bad at all. And of course, if you want to, if you have a whole bunch of these battery bricks, you're, you're good there as well. So let's just take a look here. I'm gonna plug in one of these. So we'll take one of these big batteries. So again, these are like a 970 series and this should just slide in like so, making that much larger and you'll see it boot right up. I do have this little screen protector on it. I may keep that on right now. And what I'm getting is no signal. So hold on while I plug this in. I may just see if I can plug this in straight to my camera right now. Hopefully this all goes well and I just don't lose signal completely. Hold on guys. All right guys, so this actually took much longer than I thought it was gonna take because when I looked at that HDMI cable, that comes in the box. It's like a micro, I believe, HDMI. And my cameras, of course, need mini HDMI. I didn't even know there was such a thing, so my cable didn't fit. I had to order one, and we're back, because you can see here now, I got my camera down here, and this is, this is normally the camera that I have facing over here, down here. So you can kind of see why I need a monitor because of all this stuff. Is it completely necessary? Well, not all of this stuff is, but again, because I do some freelance work, you never just know how the light's gonna be in the room and last thing you want is some kind of lens flare coming across that perfect shot and you're like, great, that's fantastic. Anyways, here it is. I still have this little piece on. I'm gonna keep it on right now, but all attached, this cable, a little longer than I wanted it, but it's here. Anyway, so be it. On here, we can kind of go through some of it. You guys will be able to see it. I'm gonna turn my camera on right now. And one of the things to first realize is that if this is off, then your camera's display, at least on the RP, now this is only on the RP, may not be on the brand that you have. You can only have one of the displays working. So this is on on the back. If I want this on, I'm gonna come across the top, hit the power button. You'll see this start up feel world. Looking good. And there we go. Up in the top right hand corner, you would have saw first the resolution. So it said 1080p. We got 100% battery, which is awesome. I have my histogram turned on. And of course you are seeing some of the information that is normally being displayed on the back of my camera. So again, that's something that you can kind of play with in your own menu settings on your camera, depending on which camera you have. Now, a few things, just so you know. Uh, you can go in through some of the buttons up here and we'll talk about some of those in a minute. But if you actually slide down on the screen, so you actually see if I slide down on the screen, you will see this volume come up. Oh, my screen just went to sleep. You will see volume. And if I just keep tapping that up or down, you'll see that go up. So that's gonna be volume that's coming into the camera. You can kind of play with that. Tap it to go away. If you actually double tap on the screen, you will get this come up. And this is kind of the one that you and I are probably gonna play with the most. So up at the top, you'll see histogram on. That's where this is showing up. And that's, you can see I can tap that and turn it off or on, depending on what I want. Uh, focus assist, focus assist actually for me can be important. So if you wanna turn that on here, you'll see you pop that on. And if I were to just double tap to get rid of that, You'll see anything that's kind of in focus gets that little red outline around it, which is actually kind of cool. Double tap to go back. You can turn that back off again. Uh, peaking color. So again, if you didn't want red, you wanted a different color, you could change that. Uh, do you want to embed audio? Uh, overexposure. So if you want to come in here and turn that on, you'll see you get your little zebras kind of fly up and down. So if exposure setting is good. And this is really cool, even if you're just doing a manual set, because you could come in here now and actually just manipulate this to get those so that they go away and then just turn that feature back off if you wanted as well and i'll turn that back off as well as you'll have exposure level your check field and false colors so if you want to come in here and do false colors here's your false colors so really nice to be able to play with all that so that's going to be the top one you can come in here and you'll see the plus so on the top you'll see like the nine grid uh safe frames Center marker, I actually have the center marker turned on, which is a little plus in the center. Ratio marker, mark colors, mark width. So all kinds of little settings that you can kind of do in here, as well as all things for your RGB, 
These are gonna be your settings. Hopefully you guys can see all these right here. And last but not least, you have a function one and a function two. Now those are the two buttons up at the top. There's that function one and function two buttons and you can assign them. I have my F1 set as focus assist, so I can tap that and I can scroll through that and say I wanna change it to aspect ratio or image flip or whatever you want and you can kinda of go through those. I have mine again set to focus assist and F2 set to histogram. What happens is when this is just by itself, I can actually go up top here to the F1 button and you'll see my focus assist turns on. Hit it again, focus assist turns off. Hit the button beside it, which is the F2 button. My histogram goes away, my histogram comes back. And it's kind of nice that you and I can just kind of set those. Set them however we want and we're, and we're good to go. So you can just kind of play around with some of that functionality. So is this the brightest display? No, but I took it outside a little bit today and I could see it. It's probably about the same, I would say almost brightness as the actual display on the back of my Canon. Very similar in brightness, so easily seeable. Does have a headphone jack on here, which is nice, which can be cool for a lot of us that may have a camera that doesn't necessarily have a headphone jack. This way you and I can monitor that audio because that can be important as well. I have an interview that I'm shooting later on this week and definitely want to listen to the audio to make sure that I'm not getting any distortion or that it's actually coming through properly, not getting any static, etc. Plus, while I ordered this cable, I ordered this arm. So I got this little arm here from Small Rig, I think it is. So this allows me to move this wherever I want it, just kind of place it however I need it, lock that back up, and we're good to go. So if I'm sitting off to the side, I have no problems looking at it over here. This way I can put it off to the right, to the left, to the back, front, down low, up high, just a nice little spin. I think that's a really nice add-on for you and I. I'll put a link down below if you guys are interested in that. Anyways, that's kind of it, guys. I wanted you guys to see this new monitor because I think it's going to be super, super handy for me. If you guys are on a budget, you know, you're looking at, I think it's like 150-ish dollars, somewhere in that range, for a monitor like this. I think it's fantastic. Way more features than I was expecting and actually features, at least for me, that I'll actually find to be useful. Stuff that I'll actually use. So that's also really good. All right, my friends, I'm gonna put a link down below if you guys are interested in this feel world. It's the F5 Pro. Very cool. I'm, I'm very happy with it. If you guys are on a budget, looking for a little field monitor, or at least something that you can take a look at your stuff, especially for those that are using cameras that don't have a flip out screen. Now, now you do. It's a little bigger than a flip out screen, but that's cool as well. All right, my friends, again, links down below if you're interested. I'll put links to the little arms and that too if you, if you want to, and the cable, because without the cable, well, it's no good. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave you there. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we will see you guys next video. Later.